before, before we have this uh, colloquy, um, uh, let me tell you, and you can edit it out later if you like, uh, that my feelings about the bicentennial uh, are predicated on my philosophy that I've developed over the lifetime that human beings stand adversity very well, but they can't stand prosperity. There's a story to the effect that uh, Plato, after uh, when he became famous uh, in Athens uh, as a philosopher, was asked to go to some city on the north coast of Africa, uh, which was in trouble, deep trouble, political and economic trouble, to administer a new code of laws uh, to the city. Uh, and uh, he refused to go, saying, I cannot legislate for any people in prosperity. Now, what has happened to this country, and you can cut this out if you like, um, what has happened to this country will happen to any country that develops a large degree of prosperity. Uh, uh, I, I give you that merely because everything probably that I could say about my feelings on this bicentennial are predicated on that philosophy. If, if, if I'm right uh, about um, the mess that we're in uh, economically today, uh, uh, it's the result of, uh, of uh, prosperity, of a long period where people wanted more and more of everything. Uh, to a certain extent, our wonderfully, uh, uh, our wonderful technological uh, production uh, warranted uh, uh, an increase in uh, the things that people might have. But Obviously, we went quite beyond that, and um, a, a change has taken place uh, in people's attitude, for instance, toward death. Our ancestors, 200 years ago, were afraid of death, but uh, gradually it developed into what we call credit which remained debt just the same, but uh, assumed to be something in itself. That is to say, uh, you could use debt as a plus factor in uh, uh, production and consumption. That changed things uh, very much. The old-time banker in this country uh, warned uh, uh, those who came to him uh, to borrow money, he warned them against borrowing unless they were quite sure that they could uh, pay it off. Now, you see, um, the banks advertise uh, people come and borrow, come and borrow. Uh, uh, this this extension, this overextension of credit, it seems to me, uh, 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 which is a thing that which, take, uh, which has taken place in my lifetime, uh, has a great deal to do with the situation we're in. I should say that the principal object of a celebration of the 200th anniversary would be to discover uh, what has brought us into that situation. Uh, how did the 
people uh, of, uh, of uh, 200 years ago, how did they live? How did they act? What were their motives? What were their beliefs? Uh, is there anything in the difference that uh, now exists between the life of today and then that would explain why we are at this present juncture? Uh, well, uh, suppose you would ask me the question, if I were, uh, had autocratic power, I could do just exactly what I, uh, what I wanted to do and make other people do what I wanted them to do. Oh, uh, oh, uh, how would I exercise it? And I would probably reply, I wouldn't exercise it at all. I wouldn't take the responsibility. <laughs> now, uh, uh, three or four years ago, when there was a, uh, uh, when they, uh, when they were marching on, the young people were marching on Washington, or preventing anybody from coming into Washington, uh, I thought it was a fine rebellion. Uh, I couldn't see much point in burning down libraries, uh, uh, but I, I thought it was a wonderful uh, opportunity. Uh, uh, the young people that I personally know, who were all for a great change, uh, have either disappeared or frankly said they'd take their chance with the establishment. Uh, uh, for the most part, and 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 uh, and why and and why has this uh, happened? Because they had no leadership. Uh, they they had no Jesus. What what the country needed at that time was a modern Jesus, but uh, none appeared. Uh, and 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 so. Um, um, the, um, the, the, uh, I was trying to promote, uh, at that time I was, uh, talking a good deal out at Mather in, uh, Harpers Ferry, uh, to, uh, the classes that came into Ray Nelson. Uh, I was saying, uh, a great many things that uh, shocked uh, uh, the boys that came in from the field. Uh, well, uh, they were beginning to think that I, that I had a younger view than uh, even some of the hippies. I did see a great opportunity, but uh, for lack of leadership and for lack of one central idea, uh, it seems to have uh, gone down the drain. Uh, one day out at Harper's Ferry, we were discussing the matter of self-interest. Uh, uh, what is what is self-interest? Uh, uh, is it something uh, essential and intrinsic in the human being? Uh, uh, or, or is it something um, to be deplored? Uh, my feeling is that probably every human act is based on self-interest. Uh, but what is then the question is what is really for the true interest of the individual? Uh, the um, the um, one of the German philosophers. Uh, Kant uh, said uh, something to this effect. I, I think this is a good rendering of what he really said in German. 
conduct yourself in such a way that if everyone else conducted themselves in the same way, you would benefit thereby. Now, you see, that, that, that's a very different thing from what we call the golden rule. Uh, it implies self-interest on the part of the individual. The, um, the, um, the golden rule expresses uh, uh, a far more generous uh, view. Uh, but if if Kant if if Kant was were right about that, then the only out that I can see is for each person to have a higher notion of what constitutes true self-interest. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, or it's obvious to me, I'd say, we've gone wrong on that point, uh, which would account for our political and economic difficulties. We've been following a course uh, of false self-interest. I think the young people, two or three or four years ago, as I said, uh, had a glimpse of that. Uh, uh, they said they, they, they went they went too far. They said everything everything is wrong. We well, were throw it overboard. But the very fact that they were thinking was the saving grace. Uh, I still think the answers have to come from the younger group of people. I have no faith in the uh, middle-aged or elderly people doing anything about it. I, I still think that youth movement, as it was called, was right and sound. Maybe it'll come back again. But it won't come back as a result of... Uh, parading or celebrating in the sense of telling what wonderful people we are. We are not wonderful people. Uh, uh, we, we, are, uh, we do distressing things. Uh, uh, this is not the... Uh, this is not the... Uh, uh, well, I, I, I'd put it this way. Uh, uh, we are not necessarily the greatest people that ever existed on this earth. Uh, I, I, w I would hate to see any sort of bicentennial celebration that even intimated that we thought we were. Uh, we've broken down. We have to rebuild. On what are we going to rebuild? On more and more prosperity? No, we're going to rebuild on the basis of adversity, whether you like it or not. Uh, are we going to have more and more of everything? No, for a long period now we're going to have less and less of everything. We're going to be more like the people who existed on this continent, uh, the white people on this continent, uh, 200 years ago. Uh, stop and think. Uh, was the very fact that they had to struggle so hard uh, the origin of all the merits they developed? Is it good not to struggle? Those are the things uh, that, uh, with difficulty, I know, with difficulty, those are the things that the, uh, uh, the historical side of the National Park Service can get people to think about. It's not easy. It's not easy because you, 
you're up against the fact that people don't really want to think. But now uh, the, the, the one hope is that we're getting into some, uh, a situation where the, whether they like it or not, they've got to think. That's our opportunity now, to find a device, any device, uh, in which we can promote these thoughts that I and, and, and uh, so many others have. When I first became acquainted with the uh, workings of the National Park Service, uh, and we were beginning to talk about interpretation, uh, a great many people said, uh, don't use the word education. People don't come to the national parks to be educated. And they resent, the adults who come to the parks resent the idea that they need any education. Um, uh, as, uh, as time went on, more and more we began to permit ourselves to take the role of educators. Interpretation uh, is, a, uh, at best, of course, uh, in the parks, uh, a, 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 form, a, a uh, hopefully a, a pleasurable form of outdoor education. Now, wh what can what what can we do in that respect? You you know the difficulties. Uh, uh, everybody connected with the park service uh, knows the difficulties of uh, uh, this educational hope that we have. Uh, you can't preach to people in the parks. They don't like it. Uh, the most you can do is get them to thinking for themselves, uh, planting the seeds. Uh, the, the thing that people, uh, the thing that I, I would like as an interpreter, I would like to suggest to people right now, uh, and not through uh, parades or reduplicating the uniforms of the military and that sort of thing, was, uh, is somehow to suggest to them uh, that uh, we have gone far, but not always in the right direction. To look back over our history, uh, and not only look back, but feel back into our history and decide what things we have done which are of permanent value and where we have gone wrong. Now, uh, if you can do that, it's of vastly more importance than to uh, parade and celebrate, isn't it? Now, it, it's going to be a difficult thing to do because the hardest task, Emerson said that the hardest task that human beings have is to think. And there are occasions uh, when uh, it's not only difficult to think, but actually painful. There, there hasn't been a moment in the past 200 years in this country where it was more painful to think than it is today. But unless people think we're sunk, it seems to me obvious. So difficult as it may be, the one thing uh, of importance that the uh, National Park Service is, uh, uh, can, can do for people is by adopting uh, any method possible to get people to compare, to think. 
uh, wherever you are in the United States, the differences uh, that exist now in, in the, the life would, would, that we're living uh, compare. Uh, were our ancestors right? Were they wrong? Uh, uh, in, 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 in certain things that they did. Uh, that, that was... Uh, uh, I'm 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 saying things that I know perfectly well are extremely difficult to do, but I I merely say that more important than parades, you 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 have people uh, who come to the park service. Uh, you 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 have uh, at least occasionally you have captive audiences you have a far, far better chance uh, to get people to think than, um, than any other medium that you can think of. I, I, should, I should say that, uh, and, and it's not, not true just at the moment, but I think it always has been true since we began trying to do what we call interpretation. Uh, I think it's a vital moment. I think the opportunity right now is the best in this respect that I refer to is the best that the National Park Service, the best opportunity the Park Service has ever had. Uh, this is a crisis. Uh, 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 the greatest crisis, maybe, that the country has ever had. Uh, uh, democracy is under test. Uh, we're, we're now to find out whether it's workable with the people of 200-odd million people as it was when we had a, a straggling of people along the Atlantic coast. Will it work? Uh, will it work with, with uh, such a vast number of people? We don't know, because it's never happened before in the world. Uh, I, I think people, uh, though they find it difficult and painful to think now, I, I still believe they will think. I don't know of any better opportunity, uh, uh, any better provocation for thinking than the Park Service with its historical areas particularly because we're in the field of history here rather than in the field of nature. Um, if we can't do it, I don't know who can. Although this is a historical celebration, I, uh, it's obvious that uh, every single area in the Park Service and I would even I would even include the include the recreational areas can do something, but I I I, I, I question whether the natural areas, the scenic and natural areas, should make any attempt to plunge into what is. Uh, 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 a, a, a historical matter. Uh, the natural areas, it seems to me, should go on doing and doing better those things that they have been doing. Because one of the essentials is that people do not yet feel their kinship with nature. Uh, ma many of the alarming things that we're doing at the present time are based on the fact that people do not yet 
uh, know that they are at one with the land. And uh, if they go on doing their job, uh, uh, they can do far more than as though they tried to plunge into uh, any historical uh, uh, interpretation. That's my feeling about it.